Hello again. Um, folks, it's time. We were just announcing publicly what most of you will already know. Um, but we didn't want to do this over the website or over our Facebook page until after Sunday morning when we'd had a chance to um, you know, announce it in person to the people who would be there and have our worship and have our prayer. Um, but, uh, you know, Saturday night, 124 members of Asbury uh, voted to determine our, our affiliation with any particular denomination. Um, we first voted on whether or not to disaffiliate from the United Methodist Church. Um, of 124 votes, there were 100 votes that were yes to disaffiliate. There were 23 votes no and one abstention. So that's an 80% margin. Uh, which was well above the two-thirds threshold that we needed to clear. Um, and then we've, we then voted by uh, a margin of 91% uh, to affiliate with the global Methodist Church. Uh, which means that you know, your, your part as the congregation here is, is done. You've done your work. You can return to um, just doing the work of, of ministry. But I, I do want to take a minute because um, obviously there's 23 of you out there who are upset, probably shocked, hurt, and I have to imagine angry. Um, and I get that. I do. Um, I've, I've said all along, this is not, there, there, there's no part of this in which I take pleasure or joy. I mean, this is not... Uh, it was not easy at any point for me. Um, I, I grew up in the United Methodist Church. I, I never wanted to see it divided the way it is. Um, but I do want to um, just just say a couple things, not only to the, to the 23 of you who, um, who voted no and, and are upset about the outcome, but also to those of you watching this who are worshiping with us, but who are not members and who therefore did not participate in the vote, because I'm sure that not all of you are, maybe some of you are worried about what happens next or what kind of church Asbury is going to become. Um, maybe you're upset as well. Uh, I just want to offer a couple of thoughts about that. Um, you know, first, let's be really clear that because you know I I know what is being said out in the world about the global Methodist Church about the divide in the United Methodist Church and I have some sense of what's being said about me specifically uh, and about Asbury's decisions specifically and let's be really really clear that this was not not a decision about rejecting anybody or hating anybody or excluding anybody and it wasn't even fundamentally a decision about same-sex marriage, even though that's kind of the narrative that's getting pushed around. And I've been deeply disappointed in the leadership of the United Methodist Church um, because they've continued to push that false narrative. Um, as I've made really clear time and time again, there are much deeper issues that are dividing us um, and, and that are causing this division. Same-sex marriage is just one of many. Um, and for most churches, it is not the only reason. And for most churches, it's not even the main reason. And I think that's certainly the case here. I don't think that for really, I, I doubt for very many of us that that was even a significant factor. I think for most of us, there were other issues at stake. And, and I'm saying that after having many, many conversations over months uh, with, with most of you really by this point. Um, and so it's, it seems pretty clear to me that Asbury was not making this decision based on one issue in particular. Uh, and it seems pretty clear that the, the decision everyone is saying we made, I mean, it just, I don't think that Asbury was voting on that one single solitary issue. And I don't think that that was really the thing that was at the forefront of most people's minds. I think our folks seem to have been far more concerned with things like the, the authority of scripture and the nature of Jesus Christ. Um, and, and, and the deeper fundamental issues that were at stake. Um, now, I know that for some of you, th this is um, a deeply, deeply personal issue. You've got people in your family who you love, 
um, who you may be feeling as though we've just voted to reject. And I can't imagine the, the pain that you're going through if that's the case. Um, but I want to tell you, we did not vote, the, the, the church did not vote to reject anybody. There's no rejection of anybody. Um, there's no hatred of anybody. And I know that may be hard to believe right now. Um, but I feel it's important that we keep reminding each other of that. There's no hatred here. There's no rejection here. Um, we love all. We love all of God's people. We love all of God's children. Um, and I want to reaffirm that. I would hope by now that most of you will, will know that as as the pastor of this church, I would not stand for, the, for um, treating anybody who comes into our church differently, uh, treating them negatively or poorly, or rejecting them because of any way in which they live, because we're all sinners. And our sin is all equal in the eyes of God. There's nobody we get to just reject outright because we think they're doing something sinful and that makes them bad people. That's not how it works. That's simply not how it works. Um, we love everybody. We understand that everybody sins. And so we can love and accept someone and treat them like family and treat them with the dignity that is due to all people who are made in God's image even if we believe that they are doing something which is sinful. Because saying that something is sinful is not in and of itself a statement of judgment or condemnation. And I know people have misused it in the past to mean that. But we don't. We don't. If you have... Now, and now I'll speak... You know, so I'll speak now to not just the 23 who... Um, voted and, and are upset, but also those of you who are just worshiping with us and who are worrying maybe about what will come next. Um, if you have been worshiping with us at any point in the last two years when I have been the pastor and you have, um, and, and you have liked the things that I have said in my sermons, if you've, if you've benefited from the things that I teach, uh, both on Sunday morning and in my Bible studies and in the podcast, um, none of that is going to change. None of the things that we do is going to change. We, we, we did not vote to change our beliefs. We didn't. We believe the same things that we have always believed throughout the entire history of Asbury. Um, the beliefs of this church have not changed. The, the things that will be taught have not changed, not in the slightest. So if you have loved this church in the past, it's the same church. It's exactly the same. Um, we aren't changing the culture of the church. We have not suddenly become a, a hateful group of people. Didn't happen. We, we have not suddenly become an ultra-conservative church. Didn't happen. Um, we, didn't, we didn't vote to join an ultra-conservative denomination either, by the way. Um, Despite what, what is going out in some places, we, we should emphasize that the Global Methodist Church is not actually a particularly conservative denomination. Um, I would put them right in the middle, actually, of the spectrum of progressive to conservative. Um, they affirm traditional Christian teachings, like the vast majority of Christians in the world do, but they ordain women as well. Um, you know, they're right in the middle, and we can go on and on about why that's the case. Um, so we have not suddenly become a, a super conservative, hateful church. We are the same church we've always been. If you have been part of our church before, we're doing the same things. We're teaching the same things. We're behaving the same way. We're loving people the same way. You don't need to worry that we've suddenly become a different church because we haven't. We just simply haven't. We are the same church now as we were on Saturday morning before this all happened. We loved each other before the vote. Let's continue to love each other afterwards. 
what happens next is we get back to the work of doing ministry. We get back to doing the things that make Asbury, Asbury. I, I truly, deeply understand if you are um, grieving in the aftermath of all this. I get it. I get it. I feel that grief. When I told you before the vote that we would hurt together, I was totally sincere. We will hurt together. We will feel that pain together. Because you're loved here. If you need more time before you're ready to, to come back into our worship center and worship with us, I can understand that. But I sincerely hope, um, I sincerely hope that you won't cut yourself off from this church. That you won't cut yourself off from the people who have loved you for years and years and years and years. Because that love is still there. We haven't changed who we are. We haven't changed what we believe. All we've done is reaffirm it all. If you felt comfortable with me as your pastor before, I am the same pastor that I was before. I have not changed anything about who I am or what I'm going to teach or how I'm going to treat people. So I just want to tell you, let's, let's move forward together now. Let's put all of this behind us. Let's focus on being the church because we have a lot to be excited about. We have so much potential to do great work in this congregation. We have so many wonderful things coming up. I, I cannot wait to see what God is going to do next. My friends, I know this has been a long six months. It's been a difficult six months. It's over now. Let's move forward together in love. I hope to see you all on Sunday. <laughs>